Actually, you probably can't talk. I don't want you humming, actually, when the song is going on, please. That's not good. It's not. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that's the Justin good, remix. Uh, that's a good You're sound like a broke right Justin there. Timberlake. <laughs> He's got that's, half the that's name. That's still so. kind of somehow a compliment. That's why. That's <laughs> Justin Timberlake is, is Justin Timberlake is is one of the best of us. Uh, and by the best of us, I mean Justin. You mean a Justin? Out in the world. No, yeah, I know. there's not a lot of them out there. Justin Better Tucker. Than the Biebs. Fantasy related, Justin Tucker. I don't know. Uh, that's a good Justin. He's good. Who? Justin Jefferson. Justin Tucker. Yeah. Oh, no, Justin no. Jefferson. Jefferson's. He's working his way up. He's still got to earn his stripes, but we'll uh, we'll get there. He literally needs to do one more game. He did this week. <laughs> yeah, just do that one more time. <laughs> yeah. All then right, he's in the Hall get, of Justin. Yep, Hall of let's Justin. get into it. This is another <laughs> fantasy football show presented by Sports Injury Central. I am Justin here with Jacob and Taylor, and we're back to talk. Finally, Week One in the NFL has happened. It has hit our retinas. And uh, we're ready to talk about it, right? I mean, like, I feel like it's we finally got something to break down. No more mock drafts. No more none. Of, we're not doing that anymore. This is real NFL content. And uh, I, I think, obviously, because we're associated with Sports Injury Central and their great injury takes, obviously, you can check it out, SICscore.com. We got to start the show with the injury rundown. There's a lot of big injuries that happen in, in week one already, sadly. Uh, and I feel like we need to do like an in memoriam. Like we should have that for our injuries. Like I'll, I'll, I'll get an in memoriam song or soundtrack, and we can just like. Well, they're they're burying the queen today or something. So oh, it's that's well, cute that you said that. Timely, yeah. yeah. Rest that's in peace, <laughs> rest in peace, queen. Yeah, um, yeah. no Jacob, moment of silence. But yeah, let's let's dive into the injury rundown um, from week one in the NFL before we get into our dudes and duds, which I know we're all excited about. Yeah, it's exciting times. I mean, I already sent Taylor my waiver wire questions last night for my home league, so I was. I already had a conundrum, you know, trying to figure out the Niners running back situation. We'll get into that. But mm. obviously, Elijah Mitchell on IR, MC, MCL sprain. Uh, Shanahan said about eight weeks. So that that's a rough one. Definitely. Uh, I, I had the choice between him and Cam Akers to start. And I don't know if I made the right one still because <laughs> Cam Akers <laughs> didn't get opportunities at all. But I, I trust him back having value before Mitchell. So. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you're at a situation that you can't you can't pick a win yet. Yeah. I don't know if you won or lost yet. I mean, Acres, like we already talked about, just needs to block. I don't know when that's going to happen. He did that at college, so it's not. I don't yeah, think there's it's a lot. There's a lot soon. of talk about his Achilles. Yeah. Uh, we checked with that with our team of doctors. They don't they don't seem as less explosive. All that stuff. We'll get into James Robinson had a, had a heck of a week uh, for the Jaguars. Just nine months into his recovery, but it it definitely seems to be the pass blocking more that's hurting his opportunities rather than the early season hamstring. Or early training camp hamstring and the uh, Achilles recovery. So we'll we'll keep tracking that. Obviously, another big one is Dak Prescott with his thumb. Six weeks is the minimum, um, according to our team of doctors. He has to have hardware placed in the thumb, pins and screws, so or pins or screws. So all this four or five week talk, don't expect it. Put him on IR. Just I mean, you should hope the team puts him on IR right. to make him eligible for you to put him on IR. Jerry Jones right. hates fantasy football players. Uh, he came right. out and basically said, "Nah, we're not gonna." He's going to burn a hole in your bench for for weeks. You got to you never be able to put him in the iron. So you're not dropping him, yeah. So no. no, you're right. It's it's a hole, and it's that's it's a Jerry Jones hole. So that's it's 100 his wow. fault. I didn't. You yeah. know, I didn't. Think that's not the place you want to be in week two yeah. in a Jerry Jones hole. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I think that's that. where I'll we wind that. up. But here I'll we stay are. away from that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think. Okay, listen. I don't. Yeah. I, it sounds cynical. I mean, I'm a Packers fan. This and, and we kind of like lately have been kind of smashing the Cowboys, and it's been a good time. My friend is a Cowboys fan, and we have a little rivalry going on. This is record time for for crash and burn for Cowboys fans. Usually it's like late season. Even in the playoffs, there was like a crash and burn, and you love to see it. Um, sorry, Cowboys fans. It's just how it this is. This isn't the I mean, start of the burn, they, though. They they got to the Tyron yeah. Smith is when it started. So this is like the, the continue. That was, like, the, yeah. that was the match, and then this is the full burn. Yeah. But this like, isn't going to be – this kind of is, is depressing me a little bit because it's like I don't even get to enjoy that, like, throughout the season where the hopes won't – when are the hopes going to rise? Just like, too when quick. That comes yeah. Imagine an Eagles it, fan. They're like, oh, my God, we can win the division <laughs> easily now? <laughs> you, know what I mean? yeah. you know what I mean? The, like, Very, it's like, what's it called? Batman's, like, mad that uh, Joker's out of this movie. You know, like, what's he going to do? Yeah. I got a cheese strong cat woman, man. <laughs> so it's just incredible how much that Dak injury affects. I mean, it affects Ezekiel Elliott, it affects Tony Pollard. Can Cooper Rush dump it off to the running back? There's a CeeDee Lamb conversation to be had on what his trade value is. If you like low. go down with the ship or or just low. hold on to him, I feel like you're better on off just I'd, holding on to him, see what it's happens. It's scary. It's a I'd, scary I'd be, situation. Yeah. I'd be curious yeah. to see uh, where Taylor is right now on his man Dalton Schultz. Uh, how are you feeling about Dalton Schultz with Cooper rushing? I don't know what I don't know what the stats were last year when he came in. They, he did get a win, 
Um, I think that was like October. It was like the end of October last That's year. That's a good question. question. Yeah, um, Dalton Schultz might be the one that doesn't lose any value. He because they need the Cooper Rush is going to need a safety blanket. He did. I remember um, last year he played um, when uh, the calf injury for Prescott. He had 320 plus yards against the Vikings. So I'm not trying to say that it's Rush every single game like right. that. I'm not trying to promote that at all. But the tight end is something I'm not scared of. Uh, Pollard, maybe we just need to see how well Rush can throw the thing. Elliott. I mean, his value, he, you saw like a certain point, it's if they're going to be losing games, they're not going to be running the ball. He was actually pretty efficient he's running the ball. 10 carries for 60 something, I think it was, or uh, 50 something. Yeah, 58? 50 plus because yeah. he got the the prop that we promoted. Um, yeah, so uh, he he's something that's going to be an issue. That's also tied to the offensive line with uh, Connor McGovern out. Right. Maybe he doesn't run as well. So uh, CD Lamb, I'd be scared. That's the scariest. I mean, it was one game, small sample size. Bucks, deep, Bucks secondary is good, but he doesn't I mean, look like we, an alpha. We were saying, yeah, yeah, we were saying in the room, he right. did. He doesn't look like he's running wide receiver one routes with confidence and just getting open nonstop. He looks like he needs somebody like to grab attention, even if it's Gallup, anything. It just doesn't look like he can create space by himself, and that's worrisome because that's you want that from your number one. So right, and especially if you have a, a quarterback that's not as good, you need to do more. And if he can't do more with Prescott, then what's he going to do with Rush? That'll be interesting. Just when Gallup comes back, that connection with Prescott was that what that does? Because I mean that that's going to be around what. Week nine, week ten, so maybe Gallup's That's ready any to go team. in the second half. That's any team. Like look at Jefferson. Like Thielen's just good enough that you can you have to leave Jefferson open in some pockets. Right. And if he's good enough to find those pockets, you saw that with um Jamar Chase. T. Higgins did leave with a concussion. We'll monitor him this week. But uh Jamar Chase having Higgins next to him, even Boyd. Like those two next to him, it lets him free reign do whatever he wants. And you still have you know, I mean you gotta do man on man because you gotta cover the other guys too. So it, if you got one on one situation with a really good wide receiver, it's gonna win more often than not. So you're seeing that with like like you said with Gallup, definitely think it helps Lamb get open. So yeah, you mentioned T. Higgins. Do you want to talk about that real quick? Is he yeah, playing this week? Yeah, Concussion sorry. protocol? How's that going to work? Yeah, sorry. Uh, so we, we're waiting for his practice status today. It's Wednesday afternoon. Um, probably it's probably coming out when we're recording. But if he logs an LP, that's pretty good trajectory to get uh, that's ready huge. to play. You it's just usually a DMP you need, start. Yeah. You need the FP and you need the yep. independent clearance to get cleared um, to play. So. If he's a DMP today, it doesn't automatically roll him out. He can still get the LP Thursday, FP Friday. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see on those concussions. That you can't can't rush those, can't judge them. I mean, it's, it's just uh, there's a couple around the league. It's a truly questionable we, yeah. 50-50 type deal. So correct, yeah. Uh, okay, the, it, uh, yeah. Let's last week though. Najee Harris. Uh, docs aren't big on him this week. I mean, there's a lot of mystery surrounding that team. We're trying to sift through the, the coach speak that Doc talks about on his podcast um, in detail, but. Mike Tomlin's just saying, oh, we th- he thinks he's fine. It's going to be young. Najee Harris saying, yeah, I'm good to go. Looked by video, looked more to be ankle-related, kind of mild high ankle sprain mechanism. Um, then they're saying it's only the foot. He's listed with the foot on the injury report. But they're saying it's not related to the list, Frank. Who kind of knows what's, what the deal is? But unless he gets an FP this week, and maybe it's even a phony FP, we got to see video from him. Might be looking at limited touches. I mean... Benny Snell, they don't. We know they don't want to rock with just Benny Snell. They've done that before. They're going to try Warren out, right? Um, Snell is going to obviously. It's just not going to be. You're not going to get like a good like guy if Harris doesn't play well. Even if, if Harris is probably going to suit up, so you're going to have three people vying for some type of touch. Um, Warren could be decent. I just wouldn't immediately jump to him already. Snell will probably get more touches just because they've, like you said, they've done it before. They're just not going to give him 20 carries. Um, Harris in the receiving game, you got to watch that too. He's utilized everywhere, so like. If you're looking at Harris, he's not like you said, he's not gonna be hundred percent. Um, there is obviously teams that when they draft Harris, they're not gonna put in somebody else, right? But um at this you know point in time, we gotta watch how Tomlin's using him. When they get a matchup with the Pats, gave up sixty five rushing yards last week to the Dolphins who were up most of the game. So yep. that's a stout run defense. Absolutely. So that's I mean, for that reason too, look look elsewhere from uh, Najee if Harris. you can, if you have if a you nice can. little flyer on the bench, then you, Harris, it might be the week. I know it looks bad when you draft someone in the third round and you bench him because that means like, oh, because a guy, if you're drafting a guy in the third, like first three rounds, he should never be on your bench. Right. But um, this is an injury thing. This isn't like, oh, I'm benching him because Patriots run defense is good. You are still going to play Harris if he's healthy against a really, really good run defense. But now you got the injury, then he's not going to be as effective. You have someone that can get 18 points that might barely get 10 if he scores, you know, you get that six. I wouldn't, yeah, you look for other options. Let's talk DeAndre Swift to DNP with the ankle today. Uh, we went back to video, looked like a minor left ankle deal. Um, we reviewed with our team of doctors. Stayed in the whole game, had a had a breakout first week. I mean, ju- definitely justifies ADP and the 
early second round, late first round type deal. I know you're big on Swift this year, Taylor. Yeah, he's huge. He could have a better game. You had uh, Jamal stealing uh, two touchdowns late. Um, so I'm gonna. It sounded mad because yeah, I, I, I lost. Yeah. I lost it, a it fantasy matchup, matchup. Definitely. But from an <laughs> analyst standpoint, good for him. Like he got. He does. He's a great um, a backup running back. He always right. has been. He uh, was one of the top running backs in getting first downs in the league. He's a good. He's a good player. So I know Packers fan, you're mad about losing him, Justin. But um, he's he's really good. So and so is Swift. That's a good running back like tandem to have in the backfield. So honestly, like you said, Swift having an ankle, it didn't affect him too much. He could have had the better game. Right. And we'll have to see how that uh, practice pattern works out. But our Pro Football Docs see him playing this week, six score of 83. So maybe limited touches that might get upgraded as the week continues. So more worried about the offensive line, probably. Than right. That. He had left tackle all the way to right guard. Right tackle only went out on the injury report. So yeah. we'll monitor that. Uh, George Kittle missed week one with the groin. He's DNP today wednesday so another one you're gonna need to track um don't expect full effectiveness yet growing for a tight end is, is any soft tissue for tight ends is a significant deal but might be limited snaps i know you're a niners fan but like i feel like watching him just from like a straight talent standpoint it's very frustrating like his kid could be just as good as kelsey yeah. like he should be getting like the hundred and like two touchdowns every week like i don't even care about the quarterback play just in general like he's so good but he he's so physical He's such. He's also good at blocking. He's just just very good at everything. So like he just puts himself in the line, and not it that, happens every year. Not right? that it helps for fantasy, but he's always there come playoff time. So hopefully yeah. that'll be the same way yeah. with fantasy Cross playoffs fingers, deal. Crossing fingers that you're in the playoffs by the time yeah. that, that comes yeah. around. Yeah, sorry, I wasted a fifth Jumping round ahead. on Kittle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, he's just like you know those sports where you watch a player and you're like, man, like he, you know, baseball, you got that stolen base, and then you don't see him for like a month, and you're yeah. like, that's like like Buxton back in a couple years ago. I don't exactly. know, going to a different sport, but like that was a guy that like. If he played 160 games, you're seeing an all-star talent. And right. that's like Kittle obviously has done that, but it's like he's the one that you know there's another level there. You've seen it, you know, and it's just he it's hard for him to get to that. Yeah, we'll be tracking that all this week on the website. Uh be sure to check out sixcore.com for the latest on what what we think is his uh like if he's gonna be on limited snaps, his effectiveness. We'll have that with the six. He'll score. be questionable. He's that's for he sure. He always fights, he's <laughs> fighting the people in the background to get yeah, that. Yeah, he was questionable but... <laughs> this week, even though it's a phony one. Right. Don't practice yeah. all week and you're questionable. Yeah. Let's uh let's hit these hammies before we get to dudes and duds. I know that it depends We're on when to you're gym? listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah we gotta hit these hammies. Uh <laughs> when, it depends on when you're listening to the podcast, but uh Keenan Allen Thursday night, right? Hamstring. Uh, I think he's already been ruled out yeah, at correct. this point. Uh, I, I think the easy analysis here, I, I feel like Josh, Joshua Palmer, I'm all in on this guy. I feel like I, I scooped him at the end of almost any every draft I was Absolutely. in. Absolutely. I, um, I think he's, a, a at least for a couple of weeks, depending on how long Keenan Allen's out. That's yeah, it could easily bleed into week three. Um, well, it's like, um, that's why I was telling you guys, it's Mike Williams is not going to replace him. He's going to get more opportunities probably. So like we, we wrote a post article um, earlier, you know, six and a half yards is a little much for him, but he can do that with just the more opportunities. But the guy that's going to replace Keenan Allen is a different receiver. It's one that runs routes, intermediates, the Palmers, the DeAndre Carter that showed up. Jalen Guyton even is the kind of receiver that does that kind of stuff, more slot. But like you, you're not replacing Mike uh, Mike Williams over an Allen slot. So like you said, look at the Palmers, look at the DeAndre Carters going to Thursday DFS, little streamer. Because like you said, you if you have Keenan Allen, you need to replace him. He is officially out. So there, you need to find options, and that's a those are Josh Palmer's a little option within his own team. Chris Godwin's yeah. the other hammy. He came in with the ACL uh, limited snaps. Looked to be a little bit more than limited snaps, but he got 24 yards on that first screen and then pulled up with the hammy. So that'll be interesting to see what it does to that wide receiver room. I think Russell Gage had the hamstring last week and kind of was a decoy role. So it'll be interesting to see if he soaks up all the snaps yeah, or the one- soaks up the targets or is it going to be Mike Evans more? Or Julio. Or Julio. I, Julio actually got a lot of targets. Right. He didn't do it a lot with them, but... um. Gage, like you said, maybe it's another because like, he was one that he was ramping up. So week one was a little bit of a question, but it was an early preseason hamstring. So hopefully this is this week he'll finally be ready to go. Like I said, he was on the field. It's probably more of like a missed time with Tom Brady. He kind of had uh, there's reports that he had chemistry and before the uh, hamstring strain. So hopefully it's not yeah. that much of a ramp up. And he can do what Godwin does. That's why if we talked about replacing Keenan Allen, Mike can't. Um, what's it called you know he can't that this receiver can't right so, yeah, so um so it, it would be key you know it's to, like you know, for like easy yep. replacement type absolutely deal. yeah all right so you uh i mean you guys you guys good Russell any more Gage, injuries sorry, we want to good, we're good on the hammies i think we hit them sufficiently nice all right they're they're sufficiently rubbed and uh we can now get into a dudes and duds here we go dudes and duds Man, it just gets me every time it's beautiful it's 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 art. You know, have we released that to your voice 
No, I'm, I wasn't going to tell anybody, but yeah, that's that's me, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to. Some, no, we, no, we got two strangers off the street. With some manipulation, that was me. Yeah, that was. Are you saying we just grabbed somebody off the street randomly? No, that was me. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll like pay them. Said it was hours of work, bro. <laughs> man. Like I'm not just like trying to pick someone off the street. Like we at least will help you out. You know. Hey, give me your voice for a little bit. <laughs> uh, no, do you, no, I don't know if you guys we'll remember. Your voice. This, this might be a deep pool. I remember um, when I was growing up, there was this um, homeless guy in the street, and there was a video about him. And he had like a crazy like radio announcer's voice. Oh, no, I saw and, this. And then Cleveland uh, Cleveland this. Cavaliers are Detroit Pistons, one of those yeah. two teams. Wow. They brought him in and he did like the lineup, like lineups or whatever. Now, his voice was nuts. It was awesome. I, you just never like got to like the full, like what happened to him afterwards. <laughs> but we, like, yeah, we, we should story. probably yeah, yeah, 30 yeah. for 30 right now. No, I'm glad yeah, <laughs> someone remembers. Yeah, but I remember <laughs> specifically that was a cool story because like I remember like that was one YouTube videos and people are starting to like, you know, viral videos or ever happening. I remember his yeah. voice was amazing like i was just like wow that's that's a you know we'll see if we can find him to get to he can he can do our uh our stuff if we can track him find the video or find him no no find, find the guy uh, wow. oh we need, wow we need, we need, we need some, some more new, promo yeah, stuff so yeah we need some promo yeah. stuff Absolutely. oxygen network you know, let's, <laughs> let's get some detectives up there. <laughs> all right dudes and duds officially i know we we tested it out in preseason that those games didn't matter they were nothing now we have week one football and we have real dudes real duds and uh, you want to start with the dudes or you want to start with the duds? How do you want to do this? Bad first, right? Bad first. You want to get the duds out? Yeah, let's get the duds out of the way. Yeah. All Sweep right, them aside. Uh, Let's end happy. Because I might be <laughs> talking, like we end of the podcast saying like people, the void and stuff. We, were, we might get right. like more negative late. So let's go happy first. All right. All right. I'll hit I'll hit my dud first, right? And this is somebody Why you got to hit him? Had... I'm going to hit him, man. He deserves it. He already is a dud. He's it. already like a low, he's lower him on the totem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll get right into it. Uh, my dud for this week, uh, Chicago Bears running back David Montgomery. Oh, okay. Uh, accountability. I know, that, accountability. I know if, you, if you go back on the podcast in our mock draft episode, <laughs> I had to advocate for David Montgomery after you guys uh, roasted me a little bit. on my. Right. I, I'm picking him at the end of the third. Uh, a lot of you're not off people, the bus. You're just off the bus week one wise, correct? This. Oh, I'm just. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm off or on. I'm just saying. Dude is a dud in week one. He just, okay. yeah, he, he just a bad game. Uh, stat, stats are 17, yeah. 17 carries for 26 yards. Oh, 1.5. I think the yards disappointing, carry. you're supposed to, you're supposed to run better in the rain, actually. Yeah, that's, I was that's gonna say, actually that's something, something that people part say. is that game was set up for him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're going against the Niners front that I mean, still Bosa and all that, but they, they had depth issues. Javon Kinlaw left the game a little bit. And he's still 17 carries for 26 yards. Because this is what the doc says in the rain. Like defense, they don't know where you're going. You do. So you can they can slip and slide while you can you can slip and slide where you want to go. Right. You know what I mean? So like you should be you have 17 carries in a rain game, you should have at least 500 yards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Khalil I, Herbert. I, I, I will say, I will say sort of redeeming factor in PPR leagues. Right. He got three catches for 24 yards. So there's something. That's my dud. Let's keep it moving. Let's not going to bury him anymore. All right. He's just saying Cleo Herbert, nine carries for 45. And that was and not touchdown. I don't think that was a redeeming really either. <laughs> 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 sorry. Just, just a dump once more on your dad. Yeah. But sorry. No, sorry. Taylor, good. let's yeah, get to your dad. Uh, my dad is also accountability. You guys, I'm pretty sure you both have him in fantasy in some way. Um, Jacob's already given me uh crap for it. Um, Pitts, two catches, 19. Um, what? You know, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Um, I mean, seven targets. That's that's, that's the one by saving silver grace. lining. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the saving grace. Saints silver, defense silver is good. Yeah, Saints yeah. secondary. The linebacking crew is especially good on the Saints. Um, I just like thought he was matchup proof. I still think he is. I'm just like kind of. I guess I'm like shaken a little bit, right? I have him as my number one tight end over Kelsey. Uh, Kelsey obviously is still the number one tight end after last week. Um, so. <laughs> Just I gotta um, keep growing with it. I still think he's the number one tight end. They're gonna match up with the Rams, so that if he's matchup proof, then expect to bounce back. Maybe. Yeah, yeah I mean, Justin hope for it. No, the schedule. Yeah. I mean, Atlanta has a like a decent schedule. So if you're taking, if I was taking Pitts number one, that wasn't really too factored into it. Right. Like he just he has the the share like the seven targets. Like you said, seven targets as a tight end, you should at least get like six of those because you're not going deep as a tight end. So a lot of like you know Deontay Johnson, he'll get like twelve targets for seven. I believe he had. It's because he's a deep receiver, so you're not hitting those all the time. If you have seven targets for a tight end, like Dalton Schultz kind of thing, you're only going 10 yards, 20 yards tops down the field. You're probably getting hit more often than not. 
So I know I'm hitting yeah. my dud too. I'm sorry. No, I'm just but, saying, uh, <laughs> I, I, I will say Mariota. I think there was two two misses that, on deep passes that if yes. you caught one of those, you're looking at his day and being like. And Pitts is probably the one like, actually that I will say that does go a little more deeper. Right. He does he's run wide receiver routes. As, yes. As they say. Yeah. That he's as they say. The, yes. As a tight end position. No, um, I say yeah. I don't. I watch Mariota. I don't want to blame Mariota too much. They actually were winning a lot of that game, so they weren't pressured to pass. He only had 215 passing yards anyway. But the people that were above him that caught more yards is unacceptable i would say um you had the the poor man's greek god i can't no one to butcher his name uh alamida z <laughs> Olim, Ol, is it Olimid, Z Zacchaeus? yeah yeah um there, tight. there yeah there's um one other um i don't know i think brian edwards there's one other person that had more yards than him and i was just it's, it's not that shouldn't happen game yeah. to game so I, I'm, dead, expect, I'm expecting week. a bounce back every single game because I need him to be the number one tight end. Cadero, <laughs> Cadero Hodges, who it was. Exactly. So <laughs> the player that they draft, like like not draft, but like pick up to be like a practice squad slash just like fourth, fifth receiver beating out Pitts, that's an issue. So yeah. uh, he needs to, I know he has a good rapport with Pitts. Uh, him and Mariota have been thrown. They haven't not had time. They both have been at training camp. They both have understand each other. Um, Arthur Smith has a really good offensive scheme using the tight end. He did it over in uh, Tennessee. So we'll see. Um, but right now, yeah, super dud. Yeah. No, I think it's important. I mean, dud is very reactionary. It's just off week one. So my dud of the week, Joe Burrow, he just let me down. Needs to be, I mean, I've talked him up, but mock drafted him. But also one that I think is not his fault. Sex seven times, do four picks with that. I mean, he just hasn't had a lot of time with the line to Joe, maybe because yeah. the appendix. Left and, tackle is the yeah. only one that was, yeah. And new, new line or new O line crew getting it together. But, out of 33 for 50, 33 attempts for 50, uh, sorry, 53 attempts, 33 completions. Still got over 300 yards of the overtime and stuff, two touchdowns. But if he's going to be under pressure like this, like all last season, then it's a worry. It's not, right? it's a worry for sure. But it's yeah. good that they upgraded those positions. So it's slightly jail. Sorry, just what were you going to say? No, you're good. That, I mean, the saying that's a dud performance for Joe Burrow. However, he didn't bury you, right? Like that, that performance. Right. He fantasy, started 22 like, points. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on how, how, but you said he had 300 are. yards. Yeah, Justin, I feel like he needs a better dud. I got a if backup dud. Uh, three thirty-eight, two touchdowns, four picks is four the dud. picks is what no, hurts. No, no, the, the four, the four picks, and he had a fumble loss too, yes. I believe. Yeah, yes. so yeah. no, I get it. No, Five but, turnovers. Also, I just say from yeah. a Steelers standpoint, like if anybody has a defense like that any week, you're you're the defense coach need to say nothing to you and <laughs> afterwards, like that's an elite performance on both yeah. sides, like, yeah. not both sides, but like you know, secondary and the line. So it's like. I don't. If he's not going to face a defensive performance like that every single week, there's no way. Yeah, and I got to feel like the Steelers' defense uh, going to be a little worse next week. Uh, maybe by yeah, a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's variance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's no way you get seven turnovers and then what? You're going to get seven again? Like, well, that and you lose your defensive yeah. player of the year, right? Yeah, that's just, correct they as may well. Have lost yep. that guy, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. He's a, he had a sack and interception out of those. So there yeah. you go, right there. Yeah. Oh, okay, my backup so, dead. Yeah. Give, uh, go, let's hear let, your backup. Yeah. Squeeze, Real quick. Squeeze, squeeze yeah, your backup dead. Squeeze it in. Nico Hardman, he's just a dud of the season. Oh, he's he's a That's dud. That's too easy. He's a dud. That's too easy. But yeah. six targets, three catches, he sixteen a yards, he and a touchdown. touchdown. But it's for, it's a forty-four point game. They would score forty-four, and he gets three catches. Damn, it's crazy say, that they, us... they upgrade or they not upgrade the room every single year. He's there, and he gets a, a gets an opportunity, doesn't get an opportunity, like, and he still has the same stats. So no, I get it. He's, yeah, a dud, just, he's a dud for life. I'm just labeling him dud for the season until yeah. he proves otherwise. So your standard, I'm just standard for dud is uh, is is you're pretty harsh on these people, man. They're like uh, if I don't get two touchdowns or f my five touchdowns on hundred yards, you're a dud. I mean, yeah. it's, that's true. Yeah, yeah. my dud like, is never going to have a leaps. touchdown or three hundred yards though. Though I want to make sure these duds, like I want you're them, them, I'm burying them. Yeah, they, they, they need to cost you. The, the, ch the chance to win or all right know, let's get let's get into the dudes real quick uh and all we'll, right where are you we'll going get into, we'll get into our our leftovers segment which is going to be pretty exciting so right, dudes right. of the week and this this is my dude for life all right i love this man unconditionally i, I love tattoo he's like incoming a, he's, like a, he's like a son to me uh it's it's mr james robinson uh from the jaguars you, you call I, your son mr yes <laughs> yeah you don't. Oh it's God. respectful. You don't. You gotta have respect for your son. Is uh, he supposed James? to have respect for you? Yes, you're no. his dad. No. Do you, do <laughs> not you respect you, not your, your father? Son's James Robinson. Yeah, that's true. It's a different relationship. Yeah. Uh, he had 11 carries, 66 yards, uh, and then he had uh, two touchdowns, one receiving touchdown, one rushing touchdown. For sure. I was apprehensive. I picked him up in a like I think 75 percent of the so leagues late. I'm in. Yeah. I got him very late. I picked him up because I like I said I I just. I, he was the one I wanted to just hold out hope for, right? I, I'm coming off an Achilles tear. I knew 
it was a grim outlook. Obviously, seeing Cam Akers on Thursday night, no way I was putting James Robinson in my lineup. Uh, I had I, I couldn't do it. Uh, but he this is the game that they wanted to ease him back in. And and he got eased in, and honestly, I think he looked better than than Travis Etienne. Etienne, I, I you know, he cut, I think he dropped the touchdown that was a walk in. Uh, I think I still think Etienne can be good, and I think he is going to be good. But I do think the heart of the offense is James Robinson in in Jacksonville. Well, what right. I said in the podcast, sorry, but when we get on the podcast before, Etienne is weirdly not able to catch the ball for some reason, <laughs> and like we we literally alluded to that, and he like you said, he had an opportunity, he, he dropped it. <laughs> he only got four carries, also. Yeah. So clear. I mean, that's going to be the that's the most intriguing uh, running back room to watch just for, as far as splits right now, especially because we didn't expect to see much from James Robinson. I mean, he is nine months recoup uh, removed from Achilles. Cam Akers, when he made it back for the playoffs, was only six months, so a little, not exactly like for like comparison. James Robinson is a little further along, but he looked he looked good on the left leg. He looked bursty. I mean, the cuts weren't as decisive, but and Doug's a vet coach too, so yeah. if he doesn't like Etienne, then it's all Robinson. Yep, he ain't gonna. And he it ain't looks like wait. Robinson early yeah, season. And Robinson looked really good. So if Etienne's dropping touchdowns, Robinson's looking good. And Robinson yeah. also like caught the touchdown after Etienne dropped it. So that's just like literally dropped hey, the ball. So yeah. like it's like, hey, who's <laughs> whose job is it? It's I'm all in on Robinson. I'm trying to any league I didn't get him in. I'm trying to get him actively. Uh, right. I, I following the beats. Uh, I saw uh, Doug Peterson was getting. He got interviewed obviously today after practice. Right. Uh, was asked what did the, what did Doug Peterson and the staff learn most from Sunday? And he said, "quote How important James Robinson is to us." That was his quote directly from his mouth. And and he goes on to say, we need to run the ball more. We want to run the ball Urban more. never figured that out. He thought Carlos Hyde was option. Yeah, why did he? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's because Carlos Hyde went to school. He was there at Ohio State yep. when Myers That's there. exactly why, yeah. So yes, I remember I when in history class, I remember when there was like old presidents and they all brought their like friends in, yeah. like into like, like to be the senators. Like, oh, you can be the director of treasury or whatever, you know, yeah. whatever. They, they did my they favorite three years ago. They yeah. weren't good presidents. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> they seems were like does not work yeah. on a football team either. This a- seems Andrew like an... Jackson, remember the other one that was like uh, impeached? He did that. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, this this seems like an ongoing theme every year in Jacksonville right. where they have to figure out. Oh shoot, we have a really good football player. I guess we well, because he's undrafted. This is record time. Yeah. this is record time. <laughs> they figured it out after week one. So that's no. what I'm thinking. I think he's a You're smash. Right. If he's healthy, he's going to be really good all season. I feel like. That's right, my dude. So I'll do my dude. My dude is Saquon Barkley, Penn Stater. We love you, Penn State over there. Okay. This kid is amazing. Uh, finally healthy. Uh, had the ACL recovery last year, then the high ankle didn't help, right? He had 160 plus yards, touchdown. He's the man there now. Daniel Jones was never supposed to throw that much. He's not going to have to now. He doesn't have anyone to throw to either. So yeah, like what he did. Um, I know we we're talking about Shepard. Kill- we're talking about Achilles as well. He had a touchdown. That's the other one. Didn't look that good. Don't get too excited. I mean, he but, had like 15 yards on the guy, and he still yeah. almost got caught for that. And, and, so. and the guy was trying to like, like wrap up his shoelaces. <laughs> so yeah. Um. No, uh, that's a situation where Barkley. They. That's an offense. That's okay. If Jones just throws it randomly, gets a touchdown or two, doesn't turn the ball over, and Barkley gets like a hundred, like that's that's a good team. And the defense, obviously, they need uh, some pass rush. They had some issues, right? But they beat a good Tennessee team, and that's all Barkley. Um, and I think there's no reason why Barkley can't do that every week. And we were talking about, um, we released on our sick picks that he had uh, 900.5 was his uh, over-under for rushing this year. You have 160-plus subtracted from there now. Like, and you have 16 games. Uh, or he's I ain't no math 16. major, but that adds up all <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I ain't no math major. <laughs> but, no, that's that's key, and that's that's my dude. Cause, um, and also, that's a dude, like, um, I don't know if we can have a reoccurrent. He easily could be a reoccurrent dude. He's He looks like there's nothing. That offensive line going that game was horrid. So he looks like if he can run through him. that offensive that line, all that's him. all him. Yep. I know he had that big run, but if you subtract a big run, he still had 100 yards. So, like... I mean, leave me a little less math. Yeah, dude. yeah math, 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 math. math. <laughs> math. But um, yeah, that's that's my dude, and he might be for a while. My dude is a bounce, another bounce back guy, Michael Thomas. Yes, you could you could hear the argument. It was late. I mean, they're catching up, but he's the dude. The way, though. <laughs> I think I think the way uh, his ankle isn't going to affect him, which we uh, maybe a little blind spot of the pro football docs are just just not a uh, situationally. Um, the analysis wasn't given situationally, but he's a red zone target guy. He's yep. huge. He towers over every cornerback, and those two touchdowns were key in the red zone. I mean, he, he's going to be do, able to do that on half an ankle. So I think he doesn't even move his, his legs. Touchdown at all. numbers <laughs> are going to be what sustains him for that, and yep. he showed that in week one, and I think he's going to show it 
continually throughout the season. So can you imagine having half an ankle? That'd be tough. That's tough. He did um, for a little bit. Yeah. He might still. It's just no, I, attached nicer. I he was another like one a, that like I did. Present. I did roll the dice on late. Him and James Robinson, great values at this point. They you they were the absolutely. If you grabbed him, but it was good to see because Michael Thomas has been out of the game for so long. It was really good to see him at the end of the game. I uh, like I like him. Like, like like yeah. yeah. He was like <laughs> he was, involved. You're like yeah. he loves it again, right? Yeah, Maybe he's that's back. good for him. I mean, no, it's yeah. good so long away from the game he's so yeah. super talented it's fun to watch him like the jefferson stuff like he was there two years ago why he just shouldn't be that big of a drop off right and we're seeing right. he could he could potentially go back to that okay so new segment this week i don't have a, i don't have an opening for it but i will next week all right I'll we'll, we'll give you some time I'll now that we ready. now that i've outed you as the voice man yeah, yeah now no, you're we'll like shoot it. i gotta make one <laughs> we'll get it we'll get it for next week but it's the leftovers right. all right it's the uh-huh. it, obviously we're we release our podcast a little bit late on wednesday so you're not the waivers have run we're here to tell you with the leftovers what could be on your waiver wire right now. Waiver wire, waiver wire, waiver wire. right now yeah. that you could scoop up leftovers, man. It's the leftovers, uh, the aftermath of of waivers. Scoop them up and uh, see what they could do for you. Let's run down this list. Obviously, we talked about the 49ers running back, so let's dive into that that whole situation. Yeah, I feel like that needs a whole podcast by itself just to get into <laughs> Shanahan's <laughs> psyche of what he values his running back. Uh, you got his George- dad, right? Mike yeah. used to do like nine running backs a game. That's what his dad is. Don't fall too far yeah, from the tree, whatever, exactly. how it works. That's uh, an intriguing one. Jordan Mason played a lot in the preseason, 9% owned. We're going to do uh, our percentages based on sleeper. Um, 9% owned on sleeper. Tyrion Davis Price, 21% owned. Healthy scratch last week, uh, along with Mason, but didn't really get time in preseason. Taylor, you're saying that's because Mason is more of a special teams guy which makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Marlon Mack just got signed to the par- practice squad, let go by the Texans after Achilles tear. So that's that's another one. Achilles is a little questionable, but I'm I'm really surprised that the Texans let him go off the practice squad. Yeah, I don't I mean they, they what I heard they did, they set up his contract so he can't move. Like they felt like they they wanted to move with Pierce and Burkhead. Um, so they let Mac leave, um, but they didn't want to lock him in on a practice squad rule that he had to move up and down three times and get locked in a roster. So they had an opening for him. So you guys scooped him up because Marlon Mack shouldn't be on any practice squad. So um, like the George, like he's he can do special teams. He's done it before. He's been a he's been a backup before to uh, in the Colts. I can't remember exactly who the first, who the first one is. I don't want to yeah. talk about it, but uh, he can do it. So um, that's a key one. He might not play this week. So you, this. Uh, struggle that you're going to have it's going to be hard this week because you're choosing between mason and price well that's kind of the fun of the yeah. leftovers is i feel like you're not picking up these guys to stream this week you're no. kind of maybe taking the long game on on these guys and who's going to shake out to have more playing time under shanahan like your fab yeah. budget shouldn't be Obviously, overly used jeff yeah. wilson we haven't even talked about but of course he's he's Wilson's rustered everywhere scooped. now yeah he he's already scooped. scooped that's why he's not worth yeah. <laughs> talking about he on was, a thursday afternoon well so. he's picked up by people i mean i have him in so many leagues because he's just like it's a running back team that likes to use two so Mitchell was getting a lot of carries, but they always threw Wilson in for a little bit. They Sermon was there, and you didn't like him, so he's on the Eagles now. But like they're always looking for that two to three guy that can slip, like slip in. And he Mitchell did that last year. He was the sixth rounder. You had Sermon in the third round. You already had Wilson. You had Mostert. Your guys are just looking for somebody. I mean, maybe Debo's <laughs> the backup running back now. Who knows? Debo was complaining about backup backup duties. He scored a rushing touchdown week one. Then he got paid. Yeah. So exactly. he can't escape it, and nope. he knows that. He he works in a he works in a running back system that that uses him and it's I don't, don't want to say but it's your fault you do it well <laughs> stop so doing what, good at it yeah. you're so good at it and then you're <laughs> telling me not to use you I'm gonna use you and especially right, so let's he should, yeah. he should start sliding like a quarterback whenever he, he sees a hit coming yeah then no let's, real stop <laughs> let's plant our flag right now right so we can yes. go back to this and look at it you right. out of these three Jordan Mason Tyrion Davis Price Marlon Mack you Marlon Mack one up. You Sorry. pick one up. That's it. Who you're, Taylor, you're saying Marlon Mack. Yeah. I feel like we got to do a thing where one of us, <laughs> we just got to pick a guy. Taylor already claimed Marlon Mack. I'll go Jordan Mason. Thank I think yeah. I think he's getting more opportunities over Davis Price. That's good because if I had the option of all three, I was taking Tyrion Davis Price. Why? So, By name why, only? I, I, for the same, no. Well, first off, Tyrion Lannister. <laughs> Tyrion uh, Lannister. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, Game of Thrones. On. Uh, Short odds. Yeah. Out. He's no, I just feel like yeah. the healthy scratch, I felt like, was unexpected. But like you said, I feel like it was because Jordan Mason has experience on special teams, so you don't need four running backs, right? So if Tyrion Davis isn't going to give your team any value at 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 that at the end of your running back slot, that's why I, I think there's a legitimate competition between Mason and, and Tyrion Davis Price. Where, it was where, all through all, all through training camp. They're, right. They've been fighting the whole time, yeah. But that's what I'm saying is I don't – I mean, I haven't been following it super closely, but from what I've been reading recently, and, and obviously you just read the news and you're you're informed. That's how this works, right? So in my head, 
Tyrion Davis Price, I think, is the better running back. I, I think he I think he winds up ahead of Jordan Mason. As He's the better running week. back because he was drafted higher than him. I think yeah. is what people think because like that's it. <laughs> T, um, Jordan Mason actually in college was the better running back. He was a, a bell cow at Georgia Tech. So I because uh, David Price went to LSU in 2019. He went to uh, you know 2000 you know for a couple of years like 2019 21. So it's like I get it. He went to the better school and like he had the better draft capital. But I we just talked about last year Trey Sermon went to Ohio State. Had the better draft. Shanahan capital. doesn't care if doesn't you don't do what matter. he needs you to do. It does not matter. You're not on the roster. Jordan All Mason right. was undrafted. I'm yeah. pretty sure. If he's this high up on the on the depth chart, Clearly he's doing him. something correctly. Yeah. So I mean, and if Price has been there longer than him, and he and he was drafted in the third round, and he's lower, something's going on. I will say one thing though, and the, the, which makes uh, Tyrion Davis Price better than the other two. He's got three names. So the, take that right. to he's the bank. One ahead on the name game for yeah, sure. He won the names. national championship with Burrow. You don't even know he was there. I didn't know he was there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let, let's go to the next leftover, and we're, we'll hammer down the criteria as as the season progresses. I think right now we're going under fifty percent owned um, on sleeper, right? Under forty five, maybe. Um, Rex Burkhead, thirty five percent owned, way out touched Damian Pierce. We get him, get him. Lo- Lovey Smith seems like it's like one of those situations too. You need to read the coaches. It might like fantasy. Like you might know, and then we might know watching it, like an analyst standpoint, that one guy is better than the other. But if someone understands the scheme better, understands situational stuff, like excluding a veteran like Rex Burkhead on both sides, like receiving and rushing the ball, I'm going to use him more. And then Lovey Smith, we talked about, he's not trying to l- learn this team. He already got the team because the NFL made a huge mistake with uh, Flores and with everything in the back end. Right. So Smith is there. He's a great coach. Done, yeah. He's a great coach, but he he got the contract. He's hanging out. Like he's gonna he's gonna push this team to where it needs to the boat needs to be steered. But don't I, I wouldn't expect him to try to develop too much. You know what I mean? So he's gonna use Burkhead more. Probably PPR. He's maybe a little bit more owned than thirty five percent. But PPR, uh, he, should be owned, yeah. he should be on every roster. Right. Correct. Eight targets, five catches for thirty yards. I know that's not fantastic production, but eight that, targets. They want to use him in the offense. What he had last game can be done every game. And, and Davis Davis Mills knows how to dump off to the running back. He's he's just a fundamental quarterback. He's going to throw it to Brandon Cooks and he's going to dump it off to the running back. I don't want to say on record that he's good, but like he's not For, bad. He's not bad. <laughs> so I, like, he's not he's not bad. bad. I mean, I'm not starting him he's in fantasy, but if he, if a he player I have is on his team, <laughs> then I love him. He sustains Brandon Cooks. He sustains everybody. So Yeah. Uh OJ Howard, whoa, you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Two touchdown could catches. Be, could be there something. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Sterling Shepard, 11% owned. Uh, we can talk about it a little bit. That's more of a stash play. Two catches for 71 and a touchdown. One was obviously the long touchdown. Remember, he dictates where he needs to go, so it's a little better than have like you know a cornerback. But like he run, he cuts and he uses his speed. He's a good route runner. He needs that. He's not like a Galladay that just goes straight ahead. That Achilles is um like the fact that he got through. That's because it was a straight ahead route run. He beat the receipt uh, beat the cornerbacks. Shrug, shrug him off. So you're not going to see a lot of route running with him, which means his reception is going to go down. He usually gets like five to seven a game when he's healthy. So his I utilization think, is down. I think what you're, sure. you're seeing with the Giants right now is is their wide receiver room is a lot like the 49ers running back room where it's like, what the hell's huh. going on? Kadarius Tony like, gets seven snaps why? and he's yeah, electric. That's happening? upsetting. Yeah, that's upsetting. Yeah. That was that, I want to make him a dud because I had so much <laughs> hot, like hype, hype on him. Yeah, but it wasn't really his he fault. He didn't even get the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, to be a dud. and Honestly, actually, in, in his snaps, he did good. Yeah, <laughs> so, he was fine. Yeah, yeah. that's weird. If he's, well, if he's a dud, then K Makers is a dud. So I don't, I don't know. I mean, um, K Makers was too easy, man. That he was, yeah, he was asking for it, but yeah, exactly. That's a softball. Uh, next guy, I would probably pick him up over Sterling Shepard. He might have stream appeal early on. Corey Davis. Oh, I love this one. Nine targets, six catches, seventy-seven yards. He's the top dog in that wide receiver core. I think he's a, like a veteran quarterback. I'm leaning on him. Like Garrett Wilson, like he's flashy. So like when he finds a pocket, I'll probably find him. But like Davis is just like very like quick. He gets open in the middle. I'm not I'm Flacco. I'm not throwing that far. So like Wilson's like waving. It's like I imagine an image like Wilson's like nine nine hundred yards down the field. And he's like waving. And I'm like, <laughs> you're wide open. I know, yeah, but I, I can't get to I the can't ball. Get you. But then like David Davis is in the middle on the pocket, like right next to the linebacker. I'm like, oh yeah, that's good. You know, I can I can uh, take a little take a little <laughs> yeah. uh, pace off the ball. You know, and that's what he's good at. He's a safety so, blanket. Yeah, like you said. Yeah. So like 
totally understand why Davis. I honestly would rock Davis until Wilson comes back. Wilson's the one that you're going to gunsling and get that 80 yard touchdown from Wilson, but you're going to get a lot more picks, right? So Wilson's just not in general going to be good in fantasy this year, I'd say. But Flacco, until Wilson comes back, I think Davis is a good safety blanket. If I told you guys right now that he had 77 yards last week, you would have no idea. No. I didn't. So, yeah. Wasn't really uh, Car- following that. Yeah. QB streamer, possibly Carson Wentz against, uh, Detroit secondary. I mean, that's a tough one. Cause, Jalen Hurts yeah. carved him up, throwing yeah. the ball, and we know your thoughts on J- on Jalen Hurts. So. Can't throw the ball. Yeah. Um, but uh, Wentz, uh, that's a tough one because I know maybe some leagues. We're talking about maybe one quarterback leagues in this one, um, like the Prescotts. You're not you're not you're not jumping team to, with him team. Like you're st- if you're if you're a Prescott guy and you pick up Cooper Rush, you're being lazy. Um, you're literally like not looking around. Like I'm sure like the Mac Jones. There's like smaller guys like that are open. Um, Baker Mayfield. Whoa, well, you know, Baker Mayfield has a good uh, matchup this week. So that's 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 something you need to look at. But Carson Wentz looked awesome. Uh, if you snuck in a late flyer on Dotson, I know he was like kind of like close to that uh, that range that was like iffy about you know pick if he's open or not. He's gonna be awesome. He looks like he's the man at least two. Um, I know you just picked up Curtis Samuel, Justin. He's yeah, a good he was, me, he was me one too. of my favorite. He was oh, one you of my guys favorite. Both do, yeah. yeah, one of my favorite like last round flyers, right? Because mm. because I yeah. got burned by him the year before. Right. I said, I'm gonna get something out of you, right? I'm gonna if you're free at the end of the draft, I gotta still see. I'm still curious. Well, that's why he's good now. Right? He, yeah. He's getting carries on like ends arounds. They're lining him up the backfield. I'm just loving everything I see. I'll talk, I'll tell you why. Ready? Rivera had him in Carolina. Yeah. OC Norv Turner. Now they're on commanders now. Rivera, same. Scott Turner's dad. <laughs> Come on. Like they know they, they not only do they know how to use Curtis Samuel, they created the way to use Curtis Samuel. Right. They <laughs> created just, Curtis Samuel. They, they so they just like, oh, Carolina, in, let's yeah. look at Carolina tape and see. No, they don't need to look at Carolina tape. They created the scheme to use Samuel. They like they don't like it's that's why it's like you said, it wasn't like last year was he had that soft tissue from the get and he couldn't just get away from kept it. Lingering, yep. Growing, growing. And he's the kind of person he gets a knee injury, you're like, fine miss a couple games soft tissue soft tissue yeah. was not a Curtis Samuel can't get soft tissue so what you saw like you said Justin if you're sharp and you you shouldn't be too you're, you should be surprised at how quickly it probably came right. but wow like he that I wouldn't be surprised that that happens like you know like more often than not this year Right. I feel like everybody, like I said, everybody who's in the same boat as me that did that and 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 picked him back up at the end of the draft because he burned you the year before, you weren't going to throw him into your lineup right away because you had to see it. And we've no, now you got to see it, that, right? Yeah. We've now seen it. So we're like, all right, we got something here. Well, that's the thing with week one. Like week one, it's all actionary of stuff that you did all the work you did in the off season. So you're yeah. like, oh my God, I was right on this guy week one. But now you have to look at matchup based and like analytics now. Like, oh, how am I, how does he match up with this guy? Because there's nothing like really lingering now. Now, like everybody has the same game film you do. So now you got to, like, you know, look a little deeper on stuff. Uh, let's get to the last two leftovers real quick. Uh, Russell Gage, we talked about a little bit already, 43% owned, but he's going to take that Godwin role while he deals with a hamstring. And then Christian Watson, 40% owned. I know Justin has a vested interest in all mm-hmm. Packers. Mm-hmm. What do you think of his drops? Is that, okay? So I mean, Christian obviously Watson, it hurts him, quick. but is he, is he done in Rogers' eyes? No, Taylor and I were talking about it before the podcast, and, and it, Christian, I, I've I've come full circle on it, right? Initially, you see that first play of the game, they go deep, he drops it, he would have been gone for a touchdown, huge touchdown. If he catches that, we're talking about Christian Watson being the pickup of the week. He, we've we've got one here. We're saying Christian Watson's the man now, and that's that's literally how fickle it is in fantasy football. It's crazy to me that if you if you look at the film of Christian Watson running routes. I don't think he caught another pass for like another two quarters because he did kind of get the black ball. You have from, to. You have to. From Rodgers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I saw yeah. Rodgers roll his eyes like all the way right. back in his head. He was okay. just, he was so mad. To you fair, just took a touchdown away from him. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. To be oh. fair, I, I, there was like a little smirk to the sideline after he dropped it where I, I don't know if it, if you, you can spin it both ways. You can spin it like there, I tried it. He couldn't do it. What do we got here? Or you could say, holy crap, that was a great play by him. We might have something here. But I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, he's impressed by it. But it also depends matched. if you're glass half full or glass half empty on well, just pack seat or just wide receiver room. No, the I, thing I, about I, drops is yeah. you shouldn't, you can't, you shouldn't be dropping a lot two games in a row. So if you drop a lot one game, I'll just be like, oh, it was a bad game for you. Right. So right now you have that little opening. Like you said, you know, I think we did have this on record on podcast saying if you find the number one receiver for the Packers, you're going to win your league. So it almost was Lazard. Right before the season, right? Right. Lazard well, yeah. got the ankle, so now it comes even more of a fickle room. Romeo Dobbs, five targets. So he got yeah. those. He got those more targets than Watson. Too. They started using the yardage him. though. He had like thirty-seven or something. Four for thirty-seven. Yeah. yeah. 
numbers. Yeah, they yeah. started using him a little bit late too. I feel no, like no Watson like, for me, like yeah. that, like you said, if you can go from like one play made you bad to good, yeah. then you're close to being good. Right. I think I think I out that, of the I think Dobbs, there. <laughs> I think Dobbs for the, the consistency. If we're talking about the rookies compared, I mean, I think when Alan Lazard comes in, you're going to get yeah, optimistically wide receiver two, but probably wide receiver three numbers from him consistently right. because he's the guy that's been there the longest. And, and Rogers, you ha- has to trust him, right? It's right, not even. Right. It's not even that he. It's it, he was wearing a T-shirt in the offseason that said Rogers and Lazard 2023 or something like that. Like he was. I don't know if you saw that. That was a thing that they're. There's I'm not a, a Packers fan. I don't keep track of the T-shirts they wear. Yeah, no, no. you got to. But now he's cheating on before. him with Dobbs, so, getting lunch. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's getting lunch with Dobbs. But I think if you I, honestly, it's shifted. Yeah. Like I wanted Dobbs in the draft, and I was like, if I didn't get Dobbs, I'm like, oh, fine, I'll settle for Christian Watson. Watching that game. Christian Watson can win a league. I think yep. he can win you a league. He, he got he open is, everywhere. Yep. He was open all over the place, and it's just a mm-hmm. matter of, of gaining the trust from Rodgers. If he gets that, it's it's to the moon with him. Well, it's the offensive line, too. We talked about that. He Rodgers didn't have a clean pocket all game, so, I mean, that's going to be an issue, obviously. But if Watson can get open, then I would say, Sky, like you said, that's a league winner right yeah. there. Uh, let's get into our injury mismatches. We got shootouts or droughts. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll fold that in a little bit. But yeah. Kind of uh, the angle we're looking at is which teams are dropping the most injury wise and which ones are getting healthier. Obviously, just week two, it's a lot of teams dropping in health. So, Bengals against the Cowboys, play all your Bengals. They're going to dominate that game, right? Yeah, play them all. Um, <laughs> Higgins, obviously, you should monitor his concussion. But when he. Tyler Boyd it, would be the big yeah. play of Higgins that can't go, right? But if he does clear concussion, you can put him back in. Um, Burrow. He, if he throws four again, just remember this podcast and don't listen again. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> like He's not going to do that. Um, he should be fine. The offensive line, like we said, it, it wasn't about injury for them. It was about gelling. So, And I saw multiple times Kappa did really good in the run. That's why Mixon had a pretty decent game. So they 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 are good. They just they, they got to figure it out. Um, Cowboys are horrid on the offense. It's, it's just every single week they go in, you're like, oh, they're going to have issues. And then McGovern, you know? And then Prescott, so it's it's not going to be fun. I think the but, only real hope you have, obviously, if you if you if you spent on CD, you're going to start him, right? Like he, if you're that high on CD, or, and probably Schultz too. I have the both. Only, yeah. yeah, the only thing you can hope for is is expecting the Bengals to roll and the Cowboys volume wise to get to just get a bunch of throws, right? A bunch of right. targets for those guys and hope that a couple of them stick. Like that's where you're at. Sounds like it's not happening. I, I just feel right. bad for the Tony Pollard owners. <laughs> They're just like, I don't know what to do with him. Uh, imagine yeah. this scenario yeah. on Scott Fish. I have a stack of Prescott, Schultz, and mm. Pollard. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. So well, now fun. you're going to have a stack of Rush, <laughs> Schultz, yeah, and get that rush. Pollard. There you go. I think I have Lamb, too, but I hope not. <laughs> not sure. Uh, the next one, it's going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, Dolphins and Raven, at the Ravens. Ravens might have offensive struggles they were down to Jawan James on left tackle. Torn Achilles, he's done for the year. Ronnie Stanley's ankle is not 100%. The left tackle position is a question. J.K. Dobbins is obviously a big question. Lamar already said he's he's a couple weeks away. He was a full participant in practice on Wednesday, so we'll see. Looks like he's trying to suit up at least for this week, but we'll see what kind of involvement that uh, running back room has. Dolphins are just healthy. Right, they're just super. They're coming off a big win against the Patriots too. They're going to feel great. Oh, absolutely. It's a depleted Ravens secondary, and not depleted, but they're they're still making their way back from injury. Not a lot of weak side, yeah, pass rush that type of deal. So, be interesting. Dolphins are Dolphins are going to be a team at the like midway to end of the year. You're like, how is this team here? How are they? How are they doing? I feel like well, it was like like last year. Everybody was just like, if you told you how many wins they had last year, you're like, oh my god, they had nine or ten wins last year. So like their defense is looking elite, honestly. It's just I was telling. I don't know if I told you. I was telling someone on the phone. This is a team that like was just given to McDaniel. Other teams are rebuilding. Like Atlanta, when Smith got them two years ago from uh, Dan Quinn, the team was in like ruin. So like this is a team. Flores was ousted because of situational stuff that Dolphins did that were inappropriate, right? Treating him the way he did and so forth. So. He has a team that was already built, and Flores is a defensive coach. So that defense was set. You yep. know, that, that was a re... And then the, the only thing that needed to be built was offense, and Flores always struggled at that. So McDaniel's run scheme from Shanahan's elite. Um, he brought in the pieces. He got, like, Sanus and, like, the Mosterts and stuff. The thing... The, uh, called, they have a tight end there, I believe, too, somewhere. But they have people that understand your system, so that'll be good. Um, but they didn't... I mean, they didn't score a lot, but they had the... Tua was force-feeding Hill. It looked fine. Jalen Waddle had a nice touchdown. 
that's exactly what they want to do. So like that game, like you said, if their def- that defense is better than we think and their offense can do just enough, that's a good team. I mean, they only had 65 rushing yards too, so you got to yeah. expect better games from Chase, Chase Edmonds and No, that's scary. This is Monster, a run- this is a yeah. team that's a run scheme and they pass really well. And like if they're going to like you said, if the running comes, that's this is a good team. All right, it's time for our weekly tech in. Justin, are you starting Tua or Trevor Lawrence? I, I think I'm still going to... No, they're, they're still both on my team for some reason. Uh, <laughs> it I should honestly, be an easier decision now, right? <laughs> I'm still rolling with Tua. I'm still rolling yeah, with Tua. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Until Especially I see against it from Ravens, Lawrence, yep. Until I see it from Lawrence, uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep rolling with Tua. I'm going to make honestly, some like, hot take here. I'm I'm kind of worried about Lawrence. Like, I don't... Yeah, like, oh, we yeah. keep on blaming, blaming Urban Meyer. Mm. I, I'm kind of thinking he... I, I, I want to say it. I want to say it really mm. bad. Mm. You don't uh, want to wait a week. Wait one more, man. One more week. <laughs> I don't think he's that good oh. <laughs> at all. Generational is what everybody keeps no, saying. No, he was. Uh, he's the gold, he had the golden lo- Goldilocks, yeah. you know, yeah. everything, you know. So, no, he, everybody's trying to find Andrew Luck. That's my, our version of it from our years, right? Yeah, just go to the Stanford game. He's still going. He's still going to those games. He is. He can Luck. find him. He's, he's not Waldo. <laughs> he's literally Waldo, though. <laughs> if yeah. you found, if you put him in the stand, you'd be like, oh. It's just a guy. He buns in yeah. with the Stanford Put him in nerds. the student yeah. section. Yeah, they, they're all the same age. <laughs> they're all, yeah, no, he, he's a good he's a good dude. It's good. No, I'm glad. I just wish we could see more of him. But that's what I think the prototype of people are thinking. Like, ready-made quarterback in college. There wasn't much besides, like, the Lux when he was there. Like, you even watched that Stanford. You're like, wow. So, uh, I don't even know where I was going with this. But, uh, what was yeah. that? Well, cut you off. Patriots yeah. and Steelers yeah. is the next yeah. injury yeah, matchup. Yeah, me that, yeah. Just cut me off. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. No more drinks. Rather, no more drinks. Rather get that train back on the on You the don't want that train back out. on. No, that's smart. <laughs> smart. Smart move. I got to say, uh, so the league I drafted, Cam Akers, I have Ramondre Stevenson as the, the safety blanket. And I am so excited this week to see if he hits more targets in the passing game with Ty Montgomery out. Yeah, he will. Um, I it just there's no one else there. I don't peer, I don't think Pierre Strong is ready to take that role. Um, Montgomery was. Uh, he was plus 700 on any time touchdown. I told everybody in the room to take it. I didn't post it, so no one knows I really said that. So don't believe me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because the graveyard mm-hmm. of bets in your head. <laughs> <laughs> graveyard of bets. Yeah, but no. So T.J. Watt being out is massive for that. That yeah. that's the key part. They have they don't really have too much. Obviously, the Najee too on the other side. Uh, but those are two of the best players in their team, offense and defense. So they're they're going to be affected a lot. All right. Yeah, that's I don't know what else we got. I mean, we've been we're, yeah. we're get pushing time here. You guys only pay us so much, so you know what I mean? We got to we got to get out of here. We've uh we've Who pays who? Our quota. I don't know. Uh we're Ooh. paid with the joy of fantasy football. Uh, <laughs> yes. That's, that's That's a never ending yeah. pain yes. and joy. Absolutely. So, yeah, obviously we'll be back next week with the week 2 dudes and duds uh and we'll get into a couple more we'll we'll have a couple more segments ready, but yeah, it, it's so good to have football back and I'm I'm obviously very excited to uh Absolutely to really take it to the, like I said, the Retinas, man. These Retinas are happy. Uh, it's this time of the year. Mm-hmm. Anything, anything, um, you guys are cool with me still saying Retinas, right? No, I no, mean, I feel, like you're, cool it, me. but... I feel like you're making fun of me now when you do it, but I accept it. It's been oh, like, hard like, times like, the other that's day. That's my favorite thing to do. I like saying it. It <laughs> makes you. people, it's like one of the weirdest words, right? If you say retinas hard as shot. Retinas, people like coil up and like get, they get sick to the stomach. So, and that that's the effect you want to have on people? That is the effect I'd like to have on people. So let's get, uh, right. let's just keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Sports right. Injury Central, sixscore.com, SICscore.com. You can get all the injury analysis. And, uh, and we'll be back next week with more fantasy football tomfoolery. Uh, coming at your face. See you nope. later. <laughs> <laughs>